before we start, I just want to show you guys a few testimonials as you may be wondering whether the questions that I provide, whether they are legit and whether they will actually help you in your test. So Lundiwe says she wants to thank me for this video she has passed. Mpile says she also has passed just by watching my videos and practicing these questions. Grayling says the exact same question came out in their test. And lastly, this person says they were panicking the day before and they wrote on the 29th of August 2023 and they passed on the very first try. These are only a few comments that I wanted to show you guys. You're welcome to go through my channel and find more. So for the sections, there are three sections that you will find in your test. There are rules of the road, which contain 30 questions. There are road signs, which contain another 30 questions. And there are vehicle controls, which compromise of eight questions. Now there is a pass mark that you need to get uh, for the rules of the road. And the, you need to get 22 correct out of 30 questions. For road signs, you need to get 23 correct out of 30 questions. And for vehicle controls, you need another six correct out of eight. So for the first section that we are going through today is rules of the road. So question one, are you allowed to drive your vehicle on a public road if your vehicle's license disc has expired? Is it A, yes, B, no, or C, you are only allowed to drive on weekends? Now every car will have a vehicle's license disc. And once it expires, you are actually allowed to drive your vehicle on the public road. However, there's a certain number of days in which you are allowed to drive. And the question two will touch on that topic. So question two, how long are you allowed to drive a vehicle on a public road if your vehicle's license disc has expired? Is it A, 40 days? Is it B, 21 days? Or is it C, one week? Now, according to South African law, once your vehicle's license disc has expired, you are allowed 21 days in which that you can drive your vehicle on a public road. So for question three, if you lend your vehicle to a friend, who would be responsible for traffic offenses? Is it you as the owner of the vehicle? Is it your friend, the driver of the vehicle? Or is it nobody? Now you need to remember that traffic offenses are things like speeding tickets. So if your friend gets a speeding ticket while he is driving, who will be responsible for this? Is it you as the owner of the vehicle or is it him, the driver? The answer is actually you as you are the owner of the drive, owner of the vehicle, not him. Question four, when a vehicle's brake lights are illuminated, this means that the vehicle is A, turning left, B, accelerating or C, slowing down. Now brakes are primarily on a vehicle to slow the vehicle down. And if the brake lights are illuminated, it means that the vehicle is actually slowing down. Question five, when are you not allowed to overtake a vehicle? Is it A, on a Sunday? Is it B, when approaching a blind turn? Or is it C, when on a one-way road? The answer is actually B, when you are approaching a blind turn, as you cannot see what is on the other side of that turn. And if you do choose to overtake, and if there's a car at the other side, you will get in a serious accident. So the second section is road signs with question one, being what sign what does this sign mean now this sign there's a p in the sign and there's a red line going through so one thing about that that you need to remember is if there is a red line going through a sign it means you are not allowed to do something so is the answer a you must speed up in this area b you must turn on your high beams in this area or is it c you are not allowed to park in this area so since a and b are telling you to do something it cannot be a or b the answer is actually C. You are not allowed to park in this area. Question two, what does a sign warn you of? So there's a red triangle. and Every time you see a red triangle, it is actually warning you of something. So there's a cross in that sign. Is it warning you of a crossroad? Is it warning you of a church? Or is it warning you of an airport? The answer is actually a crossroad because there's whenever you see a cross in an arrow, I mean in a triangle, sorry, it will mean that there is a crossroad ahead. Question three, what does a sign prohibit? Does it prohibit you from parking in that area? Does it prohibit you from using your hooter in that area? Or does it prohibit you from using your headlights? Now we can see in the sign, there's a red line going through. It's prohibiting you from doing something. And there's a horn in the sign. So the answer is B, since you cannot use your hooter in that area. Question four. What does the sign warn you of? So there is a T in that sign. Is it warning you of a restaurant ahead? Is it warning you of a T junction ahead? 
or is it warning you of a left turn ahead? The T in a triangle stands for T junction and it's warning you of a T junction ahead. So the answer is B. Question 5. What does the sign prevent you from doing? Again, we can see a red line going through the sign and there's a thumbs up there. Is it preventing you from picking up hitchhikers? Is it preventing you from showing thumbs up to the person next to you? Or is it preventing you from hooting in that area? Obviously, the answer is A. It's preventing you from picking up hitchhikers. The next section and the last section that we are going to be looking at are vehicle controls. Vehicle controls are quite easy. So question one, which of the following is not found in an automatic vehicle? Is it A, your rear view mirror? Is it B, your indicator? Or is it C, your clutch pedal? An automatic vehicle will not contain a clutch pedal since that is only found in manual vehicles. Question two, which of the following is used to increase your speed? Is it A, your accelerator? Is it B, your brake pedal? Or is it C, your clutch pedal? So when a vehicle is picking up speed, it's, it's actually accelerating, which means that the answer is A, your accelerator. Question three, which of the following do you use to stop your vehicle? Is it A, your accelerator? Is it B, your brake pedal? Or is it C, your clutch pedal? As we have said before, the brakes on a car slow the car down. So your answer is B. Question four, which of the following do you use to engage a gear? Like we said earlier, it, it, when you're talking about engaging a gear, it's found in a manual car. So the only one of the following answers which are found in a manual car is your clutch pedal. So your answer is C. Question five, which of the following do you use to clear your windscreen? Is it your steering wheel? Is it your indicators? Or is it your windscreen wiper? A and B are not used to clear a windscreen. They have nothing to do with your windscreen. So the answer can only be C. Section one is rules of the road. I have included 10 questions in this section. So question one is saying, you are not allowed to drive your motor vehicle if the alcohol blood concentration in your body is more than A, 0.05 grams per 100 milliliters of blood, B, 0.05 grams per 100 milliliters of blood, or C, 0.005 grams per 100 milliliters of blood. So the answer for this question is 0.05 grams, as if you blow anything over 0.05 grams, you will be arrested. Question 2. Are you allowed to drive your vehicle on a public road if A. It does not have a radio, B. You drive in a reckless manner, or C. If you have 20 inch wheels. Now you are allowed to drive your vehicle on a public road if you do not have a radio as well as having 20 inch wheels you are actually allowed to drive on a public road. However, you are not allowed to drive in a reckless manner. Therefore, the answer is B. Because remember, if you're driving in a reckless manner, you are endangering not only yourself but other road users as well. Question 3. Are you allowed to have an alcoholic drink to calm down if you have just had an accident? The answer to this is A, which is no, we are not allowed to have an alcoholic drink at all. Question 4. Are you allowed to immediately stop your vehicle if you have been involved in an accident? Is it A, no, B, yes, or C, only if it's the weekend? The answer to this is B, you have to immediately stop your vehicle if you have been involved in an accident. Question 5. Your vehicle's tires must have a tread depth of A, 0.10 mm, B, 0.1 mm, or C, 1 mm. Now, every vehicle should have a tread depth of at least 1 mm. For question 6, it states, your vehicle must be fitted with A, pneumatic tires, B, waterfall tires, or C, sand filled tires. Now, pneumatic tires are tires that are full with air, and each single tire that is fitted to a vehicle that is driving on a public road has pneumatic tires. It contains air within them. Question 7. What is the general speed limit on a freeway? Is it A, 100 km an hour? Is it B, 120 km an hour? Or is it C, 80 km an hour? The answer here is 120 km an hour. Now, do remember that um, certain freeways will have a speed limit higher than 120 km an hour. 
However, in this question, they are just speaking of the general speed limit. So for question 8, it's asking, what is the speed limit within urban areas? Is it 25 kilometers an hour? Is it 60 kilometers an hour? Or is it 80 kilometers an hour? Now within urban areas, it is 60 kilometers an hour. Therefore, B will be your answer. Question 9. You are not allowed to A. Break the speed limit when you are overtaking B. Talk to your passengers while driving or C. Have a sunroof in your vehicle. So you are actually allowed to have a sunroof and you are allowed to talk to your passengers while driving. Therefore, the answer is A. You are not allowed to break the speed limit while you are overtaking. Question 10. You are not allowed to park your vehicle in a place where you are not allowed to or sorry, you are allowed to be in your garage or C. It will obstruct vehicles passing by. Now, you are allowed to park where there is a given area to park. You are allowed to park in your garage. But you are not allowed to park on a road if it will obstruct the vehicles going by. Therefore, your answer will be C. So, for road signs, we included 10 questions as well with a new science that we have never ever shown on our channel before. So, question 1 states... What does this sign warn you of? Now we can see that this is a red triangle and I have stated before that a red red triangle warns you of something ahead. And we can see there are three bumps within the sign. So does it mean that the road is uneven? Does it mean that there is a beach nearby? Or does it mean that there is a hump ahead? So this sign actually warns you of an uneven road. Question 2. What does this sign warn you of? So we can see there's a crossroad in that sign. However, the length and the thickness of the lines are different. So the um, lane in going in your direction, which will be the center line, is much thicker. So does this sign mean that there's a crossroad ahead? Does it mean that there's a priority crossroad ahead? Or does it mean that you have the right of way? Does it mean that there's a roundabout ahead? The actual answer is B. This is a priority crossroad and you have the right of way. Question 3. What does this sign warn you of? Now we can see there is a hump in that sign. So does this sign warn you of sand dunes? Does it warn you of a police station? Or does it warn you of a speed bump ahead? This sign actually warns you of a speed bump ahead. Therefore the answer will be C. Question 4. What does this sign mean? Now we can see there is a vehicle in that sign as well as tire marks. So does this mean that you are allowed to drift ahead? Does this mean that there is a slippery road ahead? Or does this mean that the road is full ahead? This means that there is a slippery road ahead. As you can see, tire marks and the car is not going straight in a straight direction. For question 5, what does this sign warn you of? So we can see there is a T-junction. However, there is a skewed line on top. So does this mean there is a T-junction ahead? Does this mean there is a tourist destination ahead? Or does this mean that there is a skewed T-junction ahead? This sign actually is telling you that there is a skewed T-junction ahead. Question 6. What does this sign warn you of? So this sign has a yellow background. And whenever you see a sign with a yellow background, it is actually a temporary sign. So it means that that sign will not be there forever. However, while that sign is still there, you have to abide by the rules stated by that sign. So does this sign warn you of temporary roadworks ahead? Does it warn you of a party ahead? Or does it warn you of a hardware store ahead? So this actually warns you of a temporary roadwork ahead. Question 7. What does this sign warn you of? So we can see there's a straight line. However, there's another lane coming in from the left. So does this mean there's a driveway on the left? Does this mean there's a racetrack ahead? Or does this mean that there is traffic approaching from the left? The answer here is C. This is warning you of traffic approaching from the left. So for question 8, there is a yellow circle within the sign. So is this sign warning you of a sunrise ahead? Is it warning you of emergency lights flashing? Or is it warning you of a traffic light ahead? The sign is actually warning you of emergency lights ahead. Question 9. What does this sign warn you of? So we can see there is a car going off the road and there is water under it. So does this sign warn you of the road ending ahead because of water? Is it warning you of a beach ahead? Or is it warning you of a pool ahead? 
the sign actually warns you that the road ends due to water ahead. Why does this sign warn you of? We can see there is an upside down triangle and whenever you see an upside down triangle on the road, it is actually telling you to yield. So does this sign warn you of a speed up sign ahead? Does it warn you of a yield sign ahead? Or does it warn you of an ambulance ahead? This sign actually warns you of a yield sign ahead. So for the last section, we have vehicle controls. So for question one, which of the following do you use to check the right side of your vehicle? Is it A, your right side mirror? Is it B, your rear view mirror? Or is it C, your steering wheel? So if we are trying to see the right side of the vehicle, you look at your right side mirror. And if you're trying to look at the left hand side of your vehicle, it will be your left side mirror. Question two, which of the following is used to prevent your car from stalling? When we refer to stalling, we are talking about a manual vehicle. Therefore, the answer will be A, your clutch pedal will prevent your vehicle from stalling. Question three, which of the following is used to signal that you are turning? Is it your accelerator? Is it your hazards? Or is it your indicators? The answer will be C, your indicators, as we have a left and right indicator on your vehicle, and those will signal that you are turning left or right. Question four, which of the following is used to prevent a parked vehicle from moving? So a parked vehicle is a vehicle that has no driver and is locked. So do you use your accelerator from preventing that vehicle from moving? Do you uh, use your handbrake or your brake pedal? Since you will be leaving your vehicle, you have to use your handbrake to secure the car. Question five, which of the following is used to change gears? Is it your clutch and gear knob? Is it your brake and accelerator or is it your steering wheel? Within a manual vehicle, we use a clutch and gear knob to actually change gears. Therefore, your answer is A. Let's start. Question one, where do you find the sign? So this is a sign with a green background with a white arrow pointing towards the left direction and an exit writing on top. Uh, will you find the sign between an off ramp and the continuing freeway? Will you find it on an urban road or on a rural road? Now, this sign is mainly found on, an, uh, on a freeway between an off-ramp and the continuing freeway. So the answer will be A. Question two, what does this sign instruct you to do? So this is a sign with a red arrow pointing upwards and a black arrow pointing downwards. Will this sign instruct you to immediately reverse? Will it instruct you to put your left indicator on? Or will it instruct you to keep an eye out for other vehicles and yield if there are vehicles in the carriageway? The correct answer will be C. Question 3. This is not actually a road sign. This is just an image of a road with a white line in the center. So what does this a solid white line mean? So in other words, what should you do? What should you not do when you see a solid white line on the road? A. You must speed up. B. You are not allowed to overtake or C, you must turn left. Now, when you see a solid white line, you are not allowed to overtake. So the answer will be B. Question four, where do you find the sign? This is a warning sign with a gate and two posts. Will you find the sign at a railway crossing? Will you find it on urban roads or on a driveway? The correct answer will be A, you will find the sign at a railway crossing. Question five. What does the sign mean? So there's a bicycle in that sign with a red line going through. And whenever you see a red line going through a sign, it is actually preventing you from doing something. So A, you are, are allowed to ride your bike in this lane. B, you are not allowed to ride your bike in this lane. Or C, you must not own a bike. So the answer will be B, you are not allowed to ride your bike in this line. Question six, what does the sign warn you of? So there's a warning sign with an animal there. A, you must be driving a 4x4. B, there's a park ahead. Or C, there may be wild animals on the road. The correct answer for this will be C, there may be wild animals on the road. Now we are going on to the second section, which is rules of the road. Question one, how far ahead should your main beams brighten the road ahead? Is it A, 40 meters? 
B, 100 meters, or C, 220 meters? The correct answer will be B, 100 meters ahead. Question two, are you allowed to have your park lights on while you are driving? Now we do see a lot of cars driving with the park lights on. So is the answer A, no, B, yes, or C, only during the day? The correct answer is A, no, you are not allowed to drive your vehicle with your park lights on. Question three, are you allowed to drive your vehicle on a public road if your brake lights are not working? Is it A, no, B, yes, or C, only during the day? The correct answer will be no, you are not allowed to drive your car on the road if your brake lights are not working, as if you are slowing down, the vehicle behind you will not know and you will end up having an accident. Question four, what should the maximum turning radius for a motor vehicle be? Is it A, 2 meters, B, 50 meters, or C, 13.1 meters? The correct answer will be C, 13.1 meters. Question 5. What should you do if an ambulance is behind you? A. Give it the right of way and change lanes. B. Have a race with it. Or C. Block it. The correct answer here is A. You have to move out of the way and give it right of way. Question 6. Are you allowed to use your hooter to greet your friend? A. Only if you haven't seen them for a while. B. Yes. C. No. The correct answer here is no. You are not allowed to use a hooter to greet your friend. The primar primary use of a hooter is to indicate other road users of imminent danger ahead. So the answer will be no. Right, question one. What does this road marking indicate? Now we can see there's a yellow broken up line and on the lane next to that line, it says bus. So what does this road marking indicate? Is it A, buses are not allowed on this section of the road? B, only buses are allowed on this section of the road? Or C, you are allowed to ride your bike in this lane? Since it says bus, in yellow writing, it means that only buses are allowed on this section of the road. So your answer will be B. Question two, what does this road marking indicate? So there's a, a yellow border there and there's a capital A in the center of that border. So is it A, this spot is available for ambulances only? B, the spot is available for tow trucks only? Or C, only automatic vehicles may park here? Now the A actually stands for ambulances, therefore this spot will be available for ambulances only. Question three. What does this sign mean? Now there's a vehicle there and we can tell that that is a taxi because of the rectangle on top of the vehicle. And this is a blue and white sign. So what does this sign actually mean? Is it A, only SUVs may drive here? B, only police vehicles may drive here? Or C, only taxis are allowed to drive here? Now the correct answer will be C, only taxis are allowed to drive here. Question four. What does this sign mean? Now, again, it is a blue and white sign. However, there's a capital A and V there. So is it A, only abnormal vehicles may drive here? B, only automatic vehicles may drive here? Or C, only race cars may drive here? Now, the A and V stands for abnormal vehicles. Therefore, the answer will be A. Question five. What does this road marking mean? So there, there are white lines there. And there's a black arrow. Now that black arrow is providing you with the direction of the flow of traffic. So what do these white road markings mean? Is it A, you can only stop here on weekends. B, you are allowed to park here. Or C, you are not allowed to park here. Now those are actually, those road markings are your parking spaces, which means you are allowed to park here. Question six, what does this road marking mean? Again, the black arrow indicates the flow of traffic, the direction of the flow of traffic. Then we have a white border and in white writing it says stop. So is it A, you must accelerate past the line. B, you can stop beyond the white line. Or C, your vehicle must stop behind the white line. Now when you see these white lines and stop, you are not allowed to park on the line. You are not allowed to go past the line. So 
The correct answer will be C. Your vehicle must stop behind the white line. Question 7. What does this sign mean? Again, we can see there's a taxi there. However, there's a red line going through that. And as I have said multiple times before, when there's a red line going through a sign, it is prohibiting you from doing something. So is it A, taxis are not allowed past the sign, B, trucks are not allowed here, or C, bicycles are not allowed here. The correct answer will be A, taxis are not allowed past the sign. Question 8. What does the sign mean? Again, it is a blue and white sign. And on South African roads, right, you will see many road signs with buses on it. However, there are three different types of buses that you will find. You will find mini buses, midi buses, and your regular length buses. This we can see is a midi bus. So what does the sign mean? Is it A, only midi buses can drive on this lane? B, only trucks can drive on this lane? Or C, only sedans may drive on this line? On this lane, sorry. The correct answer will be A, only midi buses can drive on this lane. Question 9. What does this sign mean? Again, it is a blue and white sign. However, we can see three slanted white lines. So what does the sign mean? Is it A, there is an exit 300 meters ahead, B, there is an exit 200 meters ahead, or C, there is an exit 100 meters ahead? The correct answer will be A, there is an exit 300 meters ahead, as each slanted white line represents 100 meters. Question 10. What does this sign warn you of? So this is a green and white sign. There's a white line going directly ahead. And there's another white line coming out towards the right direction with a red line there. So what does the sign warn you of? Is it A, a red bus to the right? B, you must move onto the left lane. Or C, the road to the right ends. The correct answer will be C. We will now go on to rules of the road. So question 1. What should you do? If your phone rings while you are driving, is it A, answer it and tell your boss to call you back later? B, when it is safe, pull off to the side of the road and answer the call? Or C, you can only answer it if you are in a red car? Now the correct answer will be B, you cannot answer your phone while you are driving. You have to pull off to the side of the road when it is safe to do so and then answer the call. Question 2. What should you do? If a traffic officer instructs you to disobey a road sign, is it A, do exactly what he or she says, B, ignore whatever they say, or C, leave the area immediately? The correct answer will be A, you have to do exactly what they tell you to do, right? You have to follow their rules. Question 3. Are you allowed to drive your vehicle on a public road if it does not have a license plate? Is it A, no, B, yes, or C, only on weekends. Now, you are not allowed to drive your vehicle on a public road if it does not have a license plate. Therefore, the answer will be no. Question 4. Which of the following is true? Is it A. You are not allowed to drive buckies on weekends. B. Your vehicle cannot have a radio. Or C. You must always use your indicator before changing lanes. Now, the correct answer will be C. Question 5. Are you allowed to drive alone if you only have your learner's license? Is it A, yes, B, only if you are older than 21, or C, no? Correct, the correct answer will be no. You cannot drive a vehicle alone if you have your learner's license. You have to drive with someone who has their driver's license. That's the only time you can drive with your learner's license, right? So we've come to the end of the video. I want to thank each and every single one of you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you know of someone that will be writing their learner's license test soon, be sure to share it to them. And if you want more, subscribe. On to the next one. Take care. God bless.